Welcome to my CCNA training series, my name is Trevor. This video is going to explain the application layer on the OSI model. The application layer is layer 7 on the OSI networking model. The application layer provides services to applications that exist on computers. Odds are you use the application layer more than you think. If you use a program that sends or receives data, then it's going to be a layer 7 application. The application layer is sometimes referred to as the user interface layer. A perfect example of an application layer utility is the simple web browser. The web browser is an interface that allows you to communicate to network resources anywhere in the world. Examples of web browsers would be Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, Internet Explorer. The way a web browser works is that it utilizes protocols such as HTTP and HTTPS. These are application protocols. These protocols are going to request and load HTML files into your web browser. Those HTML files are going to be sent from the web server, wherever it is that web server exists. The great part about web browsers are that they're extremely easy to use. Anybody in the world can look at a website without having to know how HTTP is working in the background. Here's a list of other application layer protocols that you need to familiarize yourself with for the exam. It's crucial that you understand what the following acronyms stand for and what their purpose and function are as protocols. First, we have HTTP and HTTPS. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and HTTPS stands for Secure Hypertext Trans Transfer Protocol. HTTP and HTTPS are protocols that allow for web browsing and they transfer HTML pages through the internet. HTTPS is encrypted and it's the secure version of HTTP. Next we have Telnet and SSH. Telnet provides terminal emulation to remote devices all over the world. The difference that you need to understand between the two are Telnet is unencrypted and SSH is encrypted. SSH does the exact same thing as Telnet except it's encrypted. SSH stands for Secure Shell. Next we have FTP and TFTP. FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol and TFTP stands for Trivial File Transfer Protocol. FTP and TFTP are both utilized for users to transfer files. What you need to know about TFTP is it utilizes UDP to transfer files and FTP utilizes TCP. SMTP stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol and it's used to send email through networks. POP3 stands for Post Office Protocol, and it's used to receive email from email servers. DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, and DHCP is awesome. It's used to automatically assign an IP address, a gateway, and a netmask to a user who's joining a network. You've seen this before. Whenever you join a wireless network at, let's like, say, a library or a school, you don't have to manually configure the IP address. Your laptop automatically gets it, and that's because it sent a DHCP request to the router that's putting off the wireless signal. Next, we have DNS. DNS stands for Domain Name System. This is used to translate a domain name into an IP address. It allows us to turn a human-readable domain name into a computer-readable IP address. NTP stands for Network Time Protocol, and this is an application protocol that allows you to synchronize your time between all of your devices in your network. The reason why you would want to do that is so if an incident happens, all your devices are utilizing the same time resource, and the, t and the, and the timestamp on the logs are going to all match up. I will be creating dedicated videos to all of these application protocols here at a later date, and we're going to go really in-depth in these, so don't worry. Thank you for watching this training video. Please leave any questions or comments you have in the comment section below. 